Next question. I often get asked the question, is modern man smart and ancient man stupid? You know, was he stupid or was ancient man uh, really smart? There's a good book called The Puzzle of Ancient Man by Don Chittick. Excellent book. I believe they've had a hard time keeping it in print. Uh, we, have a, we sell a lot of them, I know. It's really, really good. Going through all kinds of interesting artifacts that are found about humans, but made by humans, amazing machines and stuff that would have to be really, really old. Well, the Bible teaches before the flood came, the people lived to be 900 years old. Adam came pre-programmed straight from the hand of God. He could walk, talk, name the animals, and get married first day. He probably knew incredible amounts of information that was pre-programmed in, or after spending 100 years walking and talking with God, he just knew a lot of stuff that God told him. God would say, Adam, you see this tree right here? Watch this. You pull off the bark, scrape the inside, and chew on that. And, oh, wow. Yeah, it's got vitamins. You need that, Adam. Probably a lot of the ancient medicines, you know, that cultures have are remnants of things left over from knowledge passed down by the ancients. Like, how did the first guy know you can take a willow tree and scrape the bark off and make vitamin C out of the tea? I mean, how do they know that? <laughs> Who's the first guy to start chewing on a tree? I mean, you got to wonder. Somebody must have told him. So, if they're living 900 years and having huge families and learning an incredible amount, I don't know how far advanced they got before the flood came, but I suspect possibly even more advanced than we are today. And some people say, well, why don't we dig up, the, dig up their cities? Well, the problem is we're looking at what things that we need today and assuming that they needed them before the flood. Suppose they lived in a world with perfect weather. You don't need a house. Just go sleep on the grass. Every, suppose you lived in a world where none of the animals would harm you. All the animals were friendly. Everything's vegetarian, Genesis 1.29. Again, you don't need a house. And why don't we find their cars? Well, man, if you're 9 or 10 or 12 feet tall and can run 50 miles an hour, and you, everything's growing in your yard, you don't need to go anywhere anyway. <laughs> why do you need a highway system? Why do you need a car? You don't need airplanes. You don't need trains. So if you can think Garden of Eden conditions, the things that they needed would not be the same things that we need. After the flood, the people were still living to be 400 years old. So a lot of this knowledge would be retained. Now today, you know, about the time you know everything, you're 80 years old and you die. <laughs> now you can't pass it on to anybody else. But if you could live to be four or 500, you could pass on your knowledge to your great, 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 great grandchild. So it'd just be a real, real different world back then. So a lot of this knowledge, I think, went to the grave. But in the old days, you could go talk to your great, 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 great grandfather and get advice. And he'd give you some really cool advice on how to do certain things. Many civilizations after the flood would arise very quickly. If you got a bunch of smart people, Noah's sons, having, you know, 15, 20 kids per family or whatever, and they're going to go off to this area and they're going to build their own civilization. Well, it wouldn't take them long as long as they've got high IQ. They might not have all the technology. They might have to make stone tools at first, you know, until they can dig a hole to find the iron to melt it down to get, make the steel tools. They would know how to do it. It's kind of a Gilligan's Island situation. But within 50 years, you could build a civilization. You look at Robinson Crusoe, you know, lands on an island. So after 20 years, he's got a whole, <clears throat> got a farm, got a house, got a, a fort, did it all himself, you know. So yeah, it doesn't, especially you get smart people in situations like that, it, you can build a civilization in a hurry. It's interesting, if you study history, all of the ancient civilizations, the Babylonians, the Sumerians, the Greeks, they all are the Chinese, they just arose out of nowhere. Poof, there's a civilization. There is no evidence of this stuff they teach in school, of them going from hunters and gatherers and grunts and groans, <laughs> you know, caveman stuff, becoming civilized and building cities. There's no evidence of that. It's the farther back you go, it's all of a sudden, poof, there's the beginning of the Egyptian civilization, the beginning of the Chinese civilization, just like they moved in and built it in less than 100 years. So some strange things have been found in the fossils, uh, as in the ground that would indicate man used to be really smart. This little airplane, for instance, is in the Smithsonian, I believe. Right, yeah, in Smithsonian. It was found in a grave in Columbia. <clears throat> it's about a thousand years old. But it's an airplane, quite obviously, with all the features of an airplane. But it can't be an airplane, according to the evolutionist, so therefore they have it labelized in the Smithsonian as a stylized insect. Now tell me, does that look like a stylized insect to you? <laughs> See, they can't admit that ancient man knew about airplanes because that would go against the theory. The theory says modern man is smart, ancient man was stupid, he was, you know, a chimpanzee walking on four most of the time, slowly came up, and here we are today, the gods of the universe. That's the thinking in their mind. 
Actually, the evidence shows the opposite of that. Here's an airplane, again, found in an Egyptian tomb this time, 2100 years old, pre-Christ. How did they know about airplanes? A little model airplane. They knew about flight. This iron pot, we've got a model of it here, was found inside a lump of coal. This is a replica. You can get a replica from Carl Baugh. They're breaking open a lump of coal and there's an iron pot inside. They examine the coal that comes out and it's molded right to the pot on both sides. I mean, the coal formed around the iron pot. What would you conclude? That a coal miner dropped it? No, because then the coal won't be conformed to the pot. I would conclude that they had iron and were making iron vessels before the flood. During the flood, they got buried in a forest of trees and squished and turned to coal, and of course it's not going to affect the iron any. How do you get an iron pot in a lump of coal? Ancient man must have been smart, not primitive. In Peru, they've got giant stone walls like the one in the picture here. These stone walls are phenomenal. Some of the rocks in there are so huge, we can't even move them today. There's a, more in the Puzzle of Ancient Man about that topic if you want to read more. But uh, there's One of the stones down in Peru weighs 20,000 tons. Now, to give you an idea how big that is, the largest crane on Earth today can lift 3,000 tons. I think they just built one in Japan, uh, if I recall, for unloading ships. I just heard about it in 2003 or 4 that can lift 6,000 tons. There's something like that. That may be the new, somebody's going to say, oh, Hovind, you're wrong. It's more, 3,000 is wrong. You're lying. I'm not lying. I just don't know. <laughs> I think it's 6,000 tons now, okay? But still, you've got stones up here that weigh 20,000 tons. How did they move that? Who, who, who did it and how did they do it? I don't think it's logical to say ancient man was primitive. They must have known something we don't know today. Like uh, this guy said, what is truly impossible about the block is that the size of a, it's the size of a five-story house and weighs 20,000 tons. We have no combination of machinery today that could dislodge such a weight, let alone move it. We can't even break it loose from the ground, let alone move it. We can't do it. This bell was found inside a lump of coal in West Virginia. The guy who had it on his desk for years later moved to Central Florida, and I've not been able to, he's an old man now, I've not been able to get a hold of him lately, so if you get his address, let me know. Because I think he needs to have that on display at a creation museum in Pensacola, Florida. That's what I think. This thing was analyzed, and they said, well, this is some kind of strange, uh, old, uh, like a Buddhist-type god on top of here. But how could you find a brass bell inside coal? Ancient man knew how to work with all the metals. Bible says Tubal-Cain was an artificer in brass and iron. That's Adam's grandson. They were already working with brass and iron. This is a little zinc and silver vessel was found inside rock, supposed to be 600 million years old. Well, I disagree with the 600 million year part, but they knew about things. There's a great article in the Puzzle of Ancient Man about the uh, little device found in a ship that was su sunk in 100 BC in the Aegean Sea, which is right next to Greece. Okay. It's got an analog computer on board. How on earth did they know about analog computers in 100 BC? It's called the uh, Anti Antikythera device, Antikythera mechanism. The History Channel uh, in March of 2005 was amazing. It had a whole hour-long message about this Antikythera device found in Greece. They actually built a working model of it and said this thing, by turning the crank, would be able to predict where the planets would be or the sun would be. It'd be like an amazing computer for ships navigating. 100 BC. No, ancient man was not primitive. You can get copies of this hammer from our uh, museum. This uh, Dr. Baugh has the original in his museum. He lets us make replicas of it. This was found in 1934 in uh, Texas, New London, Texas. When they first found the hammer, the handle was petrified, what was left of it. And they looked at the hammer and said, man, it was in solid rock. I said, what on earth? How can a hammer be in rock? And the rock was supposed to be 400 million years old. So, of course, guys that, who believe in evolution would say, well, that just proves aliens visited the planet 400 million years ago and one of them dropped his hammer. I mean, that's the kind of logic they, they use. Instead of thinking, you know, maybe our whole time scale's wrong, they will never consider that. They cut a little notch in the hammer with a file in 1934 to see what kind of metal it was. It is still not rusted, the notch. It's a type of a stainless steel. Battelle Laboratory analyzed it and said it's 96% iron, 2.6% chlorine, and 3 quarter percent sulfur. 
And then they said, you know, we don't think you can get those elements to combine unless you do it under a much stronger magnetic field. Probably the pre-flood Earth had a magnetic field eight or ten times stronger than what we have today. This was found in Iraq, this uh, little battery. Quite a few of these were found. They knew about electricity 2,000 years ago. The Egyptians apparently knew about electricity. Here's a hieroglyphic showing snakes in some kind of chamber hooked with a wire going to a little generator of some kind. We don't know. There are two theories. One is they are using electricity to mummify the snake or do something, or they're using electric eels to produce the electricity. I don't know which way the electricity is going, or even if it's electricity. But I think <clears throat> we've got the wrong idea to say modern man is smart and ancient man was stupid. I think ancient man knew a lot. They knew about brain surgery. Quite a few skulls are found like this. This process is called trepanning. They would actually cut into somebody's head, and many are found with the hole healed over, which indicates the patient lived. Okay? I mean, cutting a hole in the head is no big deal. But some of the Ica stones from Peru show what appears to be brain surgery. Dr. Dennis Swift, that spoke at our boot camp in 2004, has uh, some of the instruments, the co hardened copper instruments that they would use for brain surgery or for surgery, period. Okay? Qu ancient man knew how to do all kinds of things with people's heads, besides cut them open and let them heal. They did make strange shapes to the heads. They apparently did heart surgery. From some of the Ica stones, anyway, it appears that they're doing, you know, open heart surgery. Here's a guy with an artificial limb attached, so they knew about that. That would have been, you know, 2,000 years ago. This little machine appears to be some kind of steam engine. They might have known about some kind of power like that 2,000 years ago. They certainly knew about the wheel. This little cat was found on uh, wheels to move around, a little kid's toy, apparently, in some of the Inca Indian tombs. They knew, certainly were smart as far as biology goes. This little spider is one of the uh, little nothing, it's 150 feet tall, it's one of the Nazca line images, we cover some of that on uh, video too, but they knew that to make this spider with no eyes, because it's blind, this little spiders are extremely rare, it's only an eighth of an inch long and it lives in caves, in the dark, in the Amazon, a thousand miles away from where the drawing is. So they really knew about their biology, and they knew to make the one leg longer, and it's the correct leg too, third leg down on the right, on the right side, that leg, during mating season, for 15 seconds, that one leg grows longer and exchanges DNA off the tip of that leg. And they knew that. So they were not ancient, uh, not stupid. They were ancient, but they were not stupid. This uh, Pira Reese map of 1513 shows Antarctica with no ice on it. How did they know to, first of all, how did they find Antarctica? How did they know to map it with no ice? Something was different, okay? This metallic sphere was found in South Africa. It has three parallel grooves around the equator, but it was found in what they said was pre-Cambrian material, 2.8 billion years old. Well, of course, I disagree with the 2.8 billion years. It's a human artifact, quite obviously, found in rock, supposed to be 2.8 billion years old. But see, rather than question, you know, maybe it's not 2 billion years old. Guys like Michael Cremo, who wrote the great book on stuff like this, are called Upart, Out of Place Artifacts. O-O-P-A-R-T. He, he studies all kinds of these things. Now, he's a Hindu. Michael Cremo has the book, Hidden History of the Human Race. He says this proves aliens came and visited the Earth 2.8 billion years ago. Rather than question, hey, wait, wait, maybe the whole geologic column is wrong, they just, I don't know why, they're not allowed to question that. His book's called The Hidden History of the Human Race. It's in our library if you want to read that. Here's a mortar and pestle, you know, to grind wheat or grind flour with, grind corn. The problem is, it's in rock supposed to be 33 to 55 million years old, way before a man got here. So what do you conclude? Well again, aliens came, visited the planet. These little uh, spirals were found. The thing that's amazing about these little spirals, they're made of tungsten, very difficult metal to work with, very difficult to refine, and these things are three ten thousandths of an inch, three ten thousandths of a millimeter in diameter and it follows the perfect golden mean ratio. Same thing used in the Fibonacci sequence, 1 to 1.618. How do they know about that? A lot of these are found in Russia. Pavel, if you get over there, get, bring me some of these. I want some of these for the museum, these little, amazing little spirals. There's all kinds of stuff on the internet about that if you want to read it.